Okay, we're going to take a quick look at this uh, Zojan welder. This is a welding machine. The ARC 205 LED is, it has an LED screen. It takes welding rods, E6010, E6011, 6013, 7014, and 7018 stick welder, of course. And uh, we'll see what's inside, because that's what matters more. This is dual voltage, 240 and 110 220 and 110 however you want to call that and by the way before i go any further just let you know i'm not a professional welder by trade so don't don't expect pro welding from me but i'll do my best to explain it to you and uh, to probably weld a piece or two this is your uh, little cable that you can convert it from the 220 uh input on the 110 so you can plug it to your wall highly suggest at least a 20 amp breaker so you're within the limitations and what else nothing else in the box itself so here's our welder let me just unwrap everything really quick out of here it's, uh this is the welder machine itself nice three prong 220 uh plug and here's the receptacle that you can plug it directly on a 110 which that's what we are gonna try and uh, here are the leads that you would use very easy and straightforward grounding uh, handle here that's what you put on the body of the either if you have a metal table or if you're repairing something or welding on something let's say a piece of metal you clamp it on the side of that metal here's how it works in here you put the rod that would weld the stick and uh, after the stick is here now electricity flows from uh right here through this right here and through the rod and goes to the other side to the ground is if you don't put this you're not closing the circuit and uh, how it works it's actually very nice because the rods have the metal core inside and the flux in the outer side or the sticks and while that uh, metal inside is melting with your metal that you're welding on the flux that's around it melts to protect it from the elements that's actually a beautiful thing and based on my limited experience with welding i've done more soldering obviously than welding but i think stick welding is one of those extremely versatile welding forms that uh, anybody can do with small practice now to be a real welder like the guys that do welding for a living now that takes some hours under the mask that's not gonna happen in one day that's just you know how that works and those guys i have mad respect for because they actually do a job that a lot of things that we enjoy in life would not exist without their work every time you get in your car there's a welder that put all those metals together you get on a plane you get on a train you get on Anything that has metal that's welded, yeah, it's those guys with that thick mask and always dirty hands that made it possible. So to me, mad respect to those guys. And besides that, here's the welder itself. Let me just show you before we plug anything in. Just the screen itself. This, are, this is where you put your uh, leads, positive and negative. And the leads are very easy, very nice. Looks like they're just copper in here. I hope it's not coated. And uh, besides that, it has some length. I would say around uh, one of them is around six feet. And the other one looks like eight feet. I'm measuring it against myself. So that's how I'm getting the numbers. <laughs> so the uh, one indicator to know, usually if you want to know either which lead is going to be your... Uh, ground is going to be the shorter one usually ground is shorter now this is eh, pretty well for an affordable welder this is very affordable no it's not a bmw just because you see those grills here anyway let me uh plug it you just plug and twist i think just like the other welders yep like this boom yeah this is not going anywhere yeah now it skipped when you put it in and twist you'll feel like a skip inside that's when you know it's locked. And then you plug in the uh, positive right here. And let me skip that too. Yep. Now you feel it right there. 
Now it's plugged. I'm not going to plug it in yet, but I'm going to plug it without the leads really quick. Just to show you how it looks turned on is obviously I don't have a 20 amp in this room and I would never weld indoors unless it's a warehouse that's dedicated to welding with uh, procedures in place because, you know, welding without a mask, without the proper uh, ventilation and all that can lead to real lifelong damages and absolutely never ever look at that spark with naked eyes that is an absolutely no no and no so let me just plug it in and see what we're doing i'm just gonna plug it to show you the screen by the way i'm not plugging it to weld anything inside here absolutely not just like that okay and we have the buttons should be on the back somewhere yep the button's big enough actually so you can uh uh flip it with your gloves too because you know welding gloves are quite thick and uh just like that boom and now it says 120 amps what's the lowest on this one 20 amp so it goes from 20 to 120. Is we are on the uh, 210 volts right now. I would, in what I'm testing it with, probably I'm not going to need more than 70. Uh, 70 looks pretty good. And you can do hot start. Hot start on 10 amps looks like. Can we change the hot start? Yeah, look at that. That's cool. So it starts the rod easier the fan has kicked in that is really nice if you hold it pressed what does it do okay it doesn't have other functions just hot start arc force uh vrd i'll have to check what that is and just normal current let me flip it off really quick okay that's what i was looking for the duty cycle is for uh some of you out there that actually know what this stuff is you probably would like to know what the duty cycle is and according to the documentation if i can put it on camera it's uh, of course it's crink or only where i want to show you right there it says at uh, 200 amps it's 60 percent and 155 amps 100 percent and the force current is zero to 50 amps efficiency 85 percent that's actually not bad uh power factor 0 0.73 i mean you're not going to use it industrially so the power factor have any effect in your electrical bill usually if you are commercial sometimes that gets to the point of the power factor usually the closer to one the better is you know you're given one to use and if you don't use it all there's some kind of calculations that electrical electric companies make i'm not very well versed on that so i'm not going to indulge more than that this is a stick welder just like i said yep that's what it is then uh welding output 104 degrees fahrenheit or 14 celsius at 10 minutes in 200 volts so it's uh 110 volts 20 to 120 amps 220 volts 20 to 200 amps I mean, in paper, everything uh, looks good, actually. Dimensions, 14 by 4.9 by 10.1. Or, yeah, 10.1, 10 inch. Is it counting for everything here? And besides that, that's all we really need to know. And uh, we have to go outside. I'm going to go get some rods. And it has troubleshooting and everything here on the uh, user's manual. That's good. I, I highly suggest you keep this around. And if you are not extremely familiar with welding keep this handy keep this handy and besides that i might uh, run to harbor freight and get some rods i guess at this point and uh, see what we can weld i have quite a few pieces of metal outside just one thing before you weld anything you must make sure absolutely that that piece of metal is clean and not because to look cool and cute on camera but it must be clean for the arc not for you is that it you're talking about electrical connections so it must conduct throughout and if you have impurities meaning it's not clean and you're trying to weld over paint you will overheat the machine and you will create unnecessary arcs that will overheat especially the ground handle you'll see it getting really hot so don't do that clean it and as always prepping is 90 percent of the work so i don't know what else to tell you except that uh, i'm gonna weld something and as i said don't laugh at me if you're a real welder first thank you for doing that job because that's not for every guy trust me i'm a guy 
It's it's not exactly for me to do it for a living. And uh, secondary, forgive my mistakes if I make any. So well, let's go weld something. And now we're gonna put the third one really quick. I put the two there already. And uh, let me do the third one real quick and see how that goes. Don't forget the mask. The mask is the most important part here. Boom. Perfect. I can take the magnet off now. And it's looking good. Let me do this a little bit more. Perfect. And that's all. You don't need more than this. Okay. It looks good to me. I don't know how it looked on camera, but it obviously did the job. And I don't know where my chipping hammer is, but this will do it. That's more than good. Boom. No. Perfect. That is all I will ever need on this one. Let me do a line here just to burn the electrode for you that understand what that means. Uh, points of well there. I didn't do it the perfect way, but you get the point. That's just uh, how this thing works. And uh, in my opinion, it did a pretty good job. It's not overheating, it's not shutting down, it's not doing anything weird. So that's all I care at this point is it's doing the job I'm asking it for. Now, I don't have any other pieces of metal left over here to just put on it. This is what I'm gonna do with this. I have a platform that will go on top here and We'll put the nuts on these bolts like this. And that's uh, the whole project here. And the weld is actually really good. Let me take this ground here. Look at that. You can't get any better than this. So, especially for the price this welder costs, it's, it's a no-brainer. It just works. Now, these electrodes are definitely not the best. You can get better electrodes, but these I just happened to find in a store real quick and literally they did not have any more on the A-Series, so, you know, I had to get what I could. But, you know, they do. They do the job pretty okay. They're the thin ones, as you see, but they still have the flux and the metal core inside. You know, they did the job. But if you have better electrodes, you can do a way better job than that. And this welder will uh, definitely accommodate that for you. So I don't know what else to say. It just works. And I can lift this whole platform from this uh, weld that we did here. Look. That's, that's all you care. That means it melts it good. And besides that, I don't know what else to tell you. I'm, uh, I'm actually impressed. I'm very impressed. And I'm still only connected on the 120 volts 110 volts i didn't even connect it to 220 that would probably give it a little bit better oomph but for what i'm doing on this project i actually don't need more than that and it hasn't uh, heated the receptacle or the outlet yet and i burned so far around four electrodes in total and not a single problem yet so i say this is a winner it makes sense to me this is a winner so i'll let you know if i do another project with this welder and uh, see how that goes until then we'll see you stay good so what do i think about this welder overall it did really good with the limited knowledge that i have regarding welders in general i might have welded a few times but you know one of those in a pinch welding and uh this will be my first personal welder that i actually own myself only that i can do whatever i want with <laughs> within responsibilities and uh let me know in the comments below what do you think i got wrong which will be probably a laundry list of that and uh what do you think these are good for 
I mean, I know I'm going to use it mostly to repair maybe lawn chairs, small things. I might, I might make my own grill. I've been wanting to do that for a long time with one of those uh, big oil barrels. I've been wanting to do one of those and now I'm going to do it and I might make a video on it and let's see if this actually can handle. And uh, besides that, like and subscribe. Link will be down in the description. You can go take a look at it yourself. It's one of those affordable welders. So it does the job that it promises to. That's all. See you next time. Bye.